So let's discuss about the dormancy of seeds. Uh, most seeds when uh, separated or shed from the parent plants are very dry. About 10% of their weight is water. In this condition, all the chemical processes are very slow and little food is used. In this dry condition, the seed may remain alive but dormant for long period without germinating. During dormant condition, the seed consume oxygen and release carbon dioxide. For instance, if we properly store wheat seeds, it can still be germinated after 15 years. So, dormancy is a resting period when seeds undergo no growth and have reduced cell activity. There are different factors responsible for dormancy of seed. So, the first one is impervious or unaffected and resistant seed coat. Seed coat maintain the dormancy of seed by being impermeable to water. The seed of family Leguminaceae and Malvaceae. The second factor is seed cores impermeable to oxygen. Uh, for example, a seeds of uh, Xanthium and grass family. The third factor is offering uh, mechanical resistance to the embryo. This preventing its growth, for example, seed of amaranthus. Okay, the next factor is immature entry. The seeds of certain orchards and uh, gymnosperm like uh, gingo have poorly developed embryo when they shed or separated from their parents. These seeds require a period of rest during which the development of embryo inside the seed is completed, which facilitates germination. Next factor is requirement of after ripening. In many cereals like wheat, barley, oat, the seeds contain a fully developed embryo, but the latter remains in a dormant state when harvested because it requires dry storage condition at normal temperature for few weeks to several months. We cannot uh, directly uh, sow it in the soil. Uh, the next factor is the presence of germination inhibitors. Sometimes the dormancy of seed is due to the presence of certain chemicals in the testa, endosperm, embryo or in the pulp of fruit. These chemicals inhibit the germination of seed while it is still inside the fruit. Some of the natural, naturally occurring germination inhibitors are parasorbic acid, viscous acid and uh, fulic acid. Low temperature is another factor. Seeds of apple and peaches etc. require very low temperature to induce the germination. In nature, this requirement is fulfilled by winter season. These seeds remain dormant throughout the winter and germinate only in following spring. Other factor is light sensitivity. Some seeds have a specific photoperiodic requirement for germination. Such light sensitive seeds are called as a photoblastic. These could be positively photoblastic or negatively photoblastic. In case of positively photoblastic, the light stimulates their germination, for example tobacco and tomato. Or in negatively photoblastic, germination in them is inhibited by light. Secondary dormancy. Sometimes the seed fail to germinate due to lack of some specific factor. This type of induced dormancy is called secondary dormancy. Following methods are used for breaking the dormancy of seed. First one is scarification. It is the process of rapturing of seeds coat by mechanical or chemical means. Mechanically, it is done by threshing the seed 
uh, by machine, light hammering or by removing the seed coat. Chemical scarification is done by placing the seed in a strong mineral acid for a very brief period. This method is used where the dormancy of seeds result due to their resistant seed coat. In nature, scarification is done by slow decay of seed coat. Next method is giving uh, pressure. Germination in seeds of sweet clover or alfalfa can be improved by subjecting the seed to hydrolytic pressure of about 2000 atmosphere at 18 degrees centigrade for 5 to 20 minutes. It increases the permeability of seed coat to water. The other method is chilling. In certain seeds, the dormancy can be broken by keeping the water soaked seeds in moist media at very low temperature for sufficiently long period. In nature, this requirement is fulfilled by the winter season. It can be done artificially by placing the seed with layers of wet moss or cotton or sand and keeping them at low temperature ranging from 5 to 10 degrees centigrade. This process is called stratification. Okay. Okay, next method is alternating temperature. Dormancy in seed of Kentucky bluegrass can be broken by exposing them to alternatively low and high temperature. The difference between the two extremes should not exceed 20 degrees. Next method is light. The dormancy of positively photoblastic seeds can be broken by exposing them specifically to red light. This effect neutralized by exposure to far red light. Such a promotion of germination by red light and inhibition by far red light can be explained on the basis of phytochrome. What is phytochrome? It is a proteinaceous pigment known to occur in two forms. PR, the red absorbing Phytochrome has a light absorption peak at the wavelength of 60 nanometer and the far red absorbing phytochrome has a light absorption peak at the wavelength of 730 nanometer. Next a method is germination stimulating compounds. Kinetin and gibberellin can induce germination of certain positively photoblastic seeds for example tobacco tomato etc even in the dark beside them potassium nitrate and ethylene are also reported to stimulate germination in certain seeds so let's discuss about the advantages of seed dormancy plant avoids harsh winter conditions gives the embryo time to develop. Dormancy of seeds in many cereals prevent their germination immediately after harvest as discussed earlier. Some seeds need a period of cold and before they germinate. So what is germination? It is actually the regrowth of embryo after a period of dormancy if the environmental conditions are suitable. So, a below given picture shows the germination process. A seed with a tiny embryo inside remains in the ground until conditions are right for seed to germinate. The seed coat means testa, first fracture. Now, the embryo can get water, and the embryonic root means radical grows into the ground to extract key nutrients and minerals. The cotyledon emerges, as shown in the picture, and produces the growing shoot first leaves. The growing plant can be divided into epicotyl embryonic shoot, hypocotyl embryonic stem and developing roots. Factors are needed for germination even when the seed is fully mature, germination will take place only under certain specific conditions. The most important of these are water, soil, temperature, oxygen 
and light. Water. It softens the seed coat and causes the cotyledon and endosperm to swell. The reserve food material stored in the cotyledon or endosperm is actually insoluble form. Water activated protoplasm secretes enzyme, which make digestion of this food possible. Water also helps in the transport of digested food from the cotyledon or endosperm to the growing points of the embryo. Soil provides moisture and humidity. Oxygen needed for aerobic respiration that creates energy for germination process. Suitable temperature allows maximum enzyme activity. Light in some cases light has inhibiting influence on germination while some plants are favored by light and some seeds remain indifferent the action of light varies some are epiphyte tobacco and tomato germinates only in the presence of light then in dark the seeds of maize and bean remain indifferent to light Types of germination. There are two types of germination, epigeal and hypogeal germination. Epigeal germination, epi means above and geal means up. In this case, the hypocotyle elongates and form a hook pulling the cotyledon above the ground. Epigeal germination seen in many dicot seeds such as bean, castor, sunflower, cucumber, etc. Regarding hypogeal germination, hypo means below and geal being up. In this type of germination, seed or cotyledon remain inside the soil or below the soil. In this type, cotyledon stay underground where they eventually decompose. Example includes green pea, gram, maize, coconut, etc. The other type of germination is viviparous germination. This is a special type of germination and very rare, occurring in mangrove plants. These plants generally grow in salty water pores. The seeds germinate while still attached to the parent plants. Due to increase weight, the seedling separates from the parent plant and establish itself in the muddy soil below. Example is Rhizophora. This is all about the seed structure, parts of seed, type of seeds, seed dispersal, factors responsible for dormancy of seeds, the condition needed for the seed to germinate and types of seed germination. Hope students and you have understood the lecture if you have any question we will discuss it in our question answer session. Thank you.